my name is Melissa. I am a diagnostic radiographer and I've held this position for almost two years now. Um, what I do is I undertake x-rays currently as a band 5. I do x-rays, mobile x-rays, as well as fluoroscopy, um, as well as um, general x-rays overall. Um, what drew me to do diagnostic radiography is my mum. She used to work in the radiology department and she introduced radiography to me. I realised that in sixth form that I'd like to do radiography due to the fact that I was really interested in ultrasound and I thought that radiography was my only way into ultrasound. Um, so far I have um, done mainly x-rays but I want to progress onto a more senior role and do other modalities such as CT, possibly MRI and eventually ultrasound. Um, what a day to day looks like for me is I'll come into the department, um, go into general x-rays and do a couple x-rays of outpatients as well as inpatients um, and then maybe the next day I might go into A&E and that's where we find more challenging patients um, who are on trolleys and will have to adapt our practice in order to suit them. Um, I mainly enjoy doing A&E x-rays because it allows me to use what I've learned in university and use the skills that I have learned by adapting my practice and allows me to think on my toes and make decisions more efficiently. So what a diagnostic radiographer does is they undertake high quality diagnostic images to aid in a patient's treatment or diagnosis and they work closely with doctors and liaison with doctors as well as other, um, other professionals in order to help patients. Um, I usually do night shifts as well and um, we are expected to be on call as well to help if any staff are unable to make it into the department. Um, I, our night shifts consist of 4.30 to 8.30, so 16 hour shifts and in, within that we do x-rays and then the appointed CT person will do CTs and we help out in the department um, x-ray a wide variety of patients of all ages. Um, my job, we also do skeletal surveys which is um, a list of x-rays for patients that are usually babies and children who are suspected of being in abusive homes. So this consists of a numerous amount of x-rays um, just to detect whether there are any fractures or bruising or things of that nature to help the radiologists uh, make a diagnosis and see if there is any type of abuse which is uh, suspected. Um, I would say the most challenging thing that I've done so far is assist in road traffic accidents. So usually they'll have a wide variety of professionals around the patient and they usually want to do um, x-rays so they'll call us and we'll come into A&E if they're in recess or wherever they are and we'll bring our mobile machines and we'll have to x-ray the patient and in that we would do three x-rays we'll do a pelvis x-ray x-ray of the chest and usually cervical spine as well and the reason why that is the most challenging is because with the situation you obviously think about how that patient is going to present and it's not it's it's quite difficult to see sometimes um what we do to protect against radiation for patients is we stick to the alara protocol which is um as low as reasonably uh, achievable or reasonably practicable which just means that we keep our radiation dose as low as possible to patients we also use aids such as lead protection lead stops all x-rays um, we also have lead shielding 
that we stand behind and we also have lead line walls which protects not only us but patients and from irradiating people who don't necessarily need a radiation dose and also by standing at a far distance from radiation so when we do mobile x-rays we go into the wards our cord is a two meter distance which means that we can stand back so with using the inverse square law in radiography um, the further back you stand from the primary source of radiation the less dose that you'll receive so that's some of the ways we minimize radiation yeah so we wear dosimeters which records the amount of radiation we receive and we'll send that off to the lab and they will they will see how much radiation we've received and ensure that it is within the limits that we should have um, if it goes above then they will call us and let us know and then set to do an investigation as to why we've received an exceeded dose of radiation um, and that will have to be taken further. What I would say to a patient who is quite nervous about having a CT scan or x-ray is that, like I said before, we keep radiation dose to a minimum um, and that we receive radiation dose anyways um, but obviously we are given radiation and um, what I would do as well is if the patient is quite unsure about having a scan we can offer them some lead protection they can put it in certain, on certain areas of their body um, but I'd also explain to them that the doctor has obviously seen it fit for you to have this scan or this x-ray due to a reason and um, the benefits will outweigh the risks of um, you not having a scan um, and that will hopefully help them because if they know that they're having the scan in order to help with their treatment or diagnosis or if they've been having a problem for a while um, it will help to aid in um, doctors discovering what is occurring what's happening so i would say anybody who wants to go into radiography whether that be diagnostic or therapeutic i would say that if you are unsure about it or just need advice about it i would say you should definitely look into it and do your own research for me the career path and the career so far has been very fulfilling just due to the fact that um, I have always wanted to do something medical, for, in the medical field, so looking after or helping people in any way. Um, radiography is such a, um, it's such a diverse career path because you can take it to different places. You don't have to stay doing x-rays, you can go into CT, MRI, fluoroscopy, um, ultrasound and mammography, lots of different um, specialised modalities that you can do and I would say just do research and see if it's something that you want to do. It's very, it's a very fulfilling career that I've found so far and then you can just move up as well in your bands and learn more and expand your knowledge and that's something i love to do and um that's that's what's that's what really drew me to the course to be honest and i would say you should go for it if you're thinking about it that you won't be disappointed thank you